All right, here we go. Hey, Claire. Hi, Lenora. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? Good. I'm excited to talk about book marketing and... All right. How we can connect our message and our books with our target audience, right? Um, Exactly. We are joining you live. Um, My name is Lenora Henson, and I am the... Oh, we got slacks coming through. Better turn that off. (laughs) Um, I I am the... um, I was the marketing manager, and now I'm kind of moving into a role, um, content and design manager for Burning Soul Press. Um, So I have a huge uh, marketing background, and uh, this is Claire Coffey. And Claire, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I am the Mm -hmm. success manager here with Burning Soul Press, and I am the one that is going to hold our author's hands going through the book launch phase and getting your books out into the world and in front of readers or as other people call it book marketing exactly um and we like to take a different approach to it um and i I really like how we do that um got all kinds of things going on sorry about that (laughs) okay Um, so Claire, let's go ahead and get started. Let's, let's get into what they really came here for. And that's how they can share their book with the world. So we have authors, we have people in the soul writers journey program, and they've gotten their book written or they're working on writing their book. Um, the big question they have is how do I share it? How do I get it out there? Once, you know, I've gone through all this, this, um, this huge process of writing it and it's ready to be born. And here it is. What do I do now? How do I share it? Where should an author who is in the process or who has just published, where should they begin? So the first thing that I would say for anybody, whether you're starting with an idea with your book or you're ready to get started with the marketing piece is you need to figure out your target audience. And for nonfiction, that's going to be who your book is going to help the most. And for fiction, it's going to take a little bit more digging, but target audience is so important because these are the people that are going to be your super fans. They're going to be the people that tell their best friend and their mom and other people that they think that your book would resonate with. Those are going to be your followers. So for instance, just starting your Instagram account because you think it's a good idea, that's going to be like a drop in the ocean. Like start with where your target audience is and by being able to niche down who those people are, you can inform all of the rest of your marketing decisions. You can decide like any kind of promotions down the road that you want to do. Your target audience is basically the key to everything. Okay. So that's the foundation to everything that comes right after. Okay. Um, so they shouldn't just run out and start all their social medias first. That's really not the place to start. Right. Because say your ideal reader is maybe a younger generation and Mm -hmm. they're not on Facebook. And Um, so maybe they're hanging out on Instagram and TikTok. You don't want to be spending all of your time posting on Facebook where your target audience is not hanging out. So, I mean, that's one reason. And the second reason is you're, if you're posting in the wrong area, you're reaching the entirely wrong audience. And it's, again, it's just like a drop in the ocean. That's true. And um, you don't want to sell to necessarily everybody. You want to exactly. reach the people that are actually going to be interested. And so finding that target market, that's the way to do it. Makes exactly. sense. Okay. I like that. Um, So how do they find the target audience? 
So it takes a little bit of research, but a way that I like to suggest authors starting is look up some authors who have books that are comparable to yours. Um, in whatever genre that you're in, find those comparable titles, go visit their pages on Amazon, read the reviews, read, um, check out those authors' social media. Who were they engaging with? And what do those reviewers and those people on those social media platforms, what do they all have in common? And you're going to start to develop a picture of a demographic, an age range, and these people's preferences, like the things that they talk about besides your topic, the book topic. Um, and then from there, you can figure out, you can start to realize maybe Facebook is where the reader's hanging out. Maybe it's the Facebook groups, or maybe you're seeing a lot more activity on Instagram or TikTok. So you're going to start to realize where that audience hanging out. Okay. And you can make those adjustments. I like that. That's interesting. So say you have a, a book, a romance book, um, you're not going to be marketing um, sports fans, right? That's right. So that's a really general example, but um, that's that could be where you start. Okay, so um, let me ask you this. How about, so once they know their target audience um, and their ideal reader, where what do they do from there? So the other thing that's really helpful when starting out your target audience and you want to build your platform is you want to have your niche topics and these three niche topics we like to suggest three these three niche topics are just like a big picture view above your book topic and this is going to be things that you know a lot about that you can talk extensively for 30 minutes at least just off the top of your head it's something that you're passionate about um, one of our authors, Jennifer Hobbs, her three topics are PTSD, suicide prevention, and veteran, reintegra veteran reintegration. Those are all topics that she touches on in her book, but those topics also are things that she uses, she talks about via podcasts, articles, the, that's her arena. I'm going to list just a few other examples. We have trauma, faith, and parenting for mm -hmm. one author. Another example for another one of our authors is transformative travel, modern motherhood, and personal growth. Um, and then we have one last one, um, homesteading, gardening, and mm -hmm. homemaking. Hmm. That's interesting. It sounds like somebody needs to write a book about those things. It does. Um, <laughs> But all of those topics are, for each of those examples, those are authors who are passionate about those topics. They mm -hmm. have a lot to say about it. And they, when it comes to PR and promotion, they can pitch themselves on those topics that they know as an expert. Right. And, and when they are doing PR, people are going to, it's going to be easier to get on podcasts because those people, those podcasters can see exactly what you talk about. It's not going to be this broad thing like, okay, why am I interviewing this person? Well, they're, they're an expert in this, or they know a lot about this. Um, so it's, it's really exactly. important. I think, like you said, exactly. I mean, if you're pitching yourself, it's not just going to be a page that says Lenora Henson, I want to go on your podcast. Right. It's going to say Lenora Henson author and topics that you know about and that also relate to that podcast right or speaking yeah. engagement and mm -hmm. then the other party that piques their interest and they can decide whether or not you're a good fit so that's, that's one reason it's so important okay and also with those niche topics beyond PR it kind of gives you a framework to work in um, as you are building your author business too um, what do I want to talk about? What do I want to blog about? Um, it's just kind of building this space around which you um, can share. 
So for sure. Um, and you're pulling those from the actual book, things that you, um, like you said, feel super confident talking about. You can um, go on a podcast. Um, if you're a romance writer, you're not going to go on there and talk about sports or, um, and even so you're going to narrow it down. What kind of romance writer are you? Right. Um, okay. So I like that. I like it a lot. Okay. So, um, so we've got, Oh, go ahead. I just want to pop in real quick for anyone who's tuning in live. If you have any questions that come up, pop it in the comments and we'll try to get to it. And if you are mm -hmm. listening after we are live, uh, drop a comment and we'll try to get to it and answer it in the comments. That sounds good. And I know this is a big topic amongst authors. So don't be shy. Um, whatever it is, we will uh, give you some direction on it. So you got your target audience, you've got your niche topics kind of narrowed down. And, you know, I wouldn't sit with the niche topics and get paralyzed there. Um, just figure something out. And if it doesn't work, you can always adjust those. Um, yeah, I, it definitely takes, I mean, sometimes authors know it right away. And then mm -hmm. for others, it takes a little bit of hashing out and trying to maybe zoom out and make it even more broader. It, it varies a little bit for everybody. Yeah. And you can change the wording too of the niche topic. So right. um, then we want to focus on the platform, the author platform. Um, so what does that look like? So the author platform, first thing, and again, before you decide to jump into social media is you want to have your own home base. And this is like where you can direct people to learn more about you. And those two big things are your website and your email newsletter. Mm -hmm. Your website's goal it has two points. You want to sell books and you want to have a place where people can contact you and learn more about you. The contact portion is not just for, um, say readers. It's like reporters, podcast hosts, anybody that might want to get in touch with you to come on their platform. That's how they're going to search for your website right away. Um, so the website has a few a few different pages that we like to recommend as uh, mandatory. And then there's some that are optional depending how much content you have, but you've got your home page, you've got your about page, um, contact page, like I mentioned, a book page. If you have one or multiple books, but you wanna have a page dedicated to books and then events slash media, places where you've appeared. And some optional content, my optional pages, excuse me, might be like a resources page. If you have, for instance, if you have topics that you've written about and it's evergreen content, meaning it's not going to expire or go out of date, you can post that material there as like, say if you are a writer and you want, if you're posting about writing resources, you could put that stuff up there. Um, your headshots, use the same headshot everywhere. Keep it low resolution and then offer a link for a higher resolution for, um, for the media kit to be downloaded. Um, we've got somebody saying, oh, I was thinking about a resources page. Yeah, for sure, definitely whatever you have to offer your audience, a resources page would be a great idea if you have that content. And if you're still building it up, put it up later once you have a few things to go. Um, let's hey, see. I think you also made a good point about the, the author shot. During this time, and it could be while you're working on your book, it's a good idea to get you know, a nice headshot that can go on the back of your book that you can use on your website, but also just some, my husband calls them lifestyle photos. <laughs> yeah, 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 they are. But they're professional lifestyle photos. And using those three niche topics, you can really um, curate that a little bit. 
um, depending, you know, if you are a, a veteran like Jennifer Hobbs, she's in her, in her camo um, and, you know, as an American soldier, she's got the American flag in the background. All those are really tied into those niche topics. And um, yeah, I highly recommend getting some good pictures taken. As yeah. your website, especially. I, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because the getting a professional photographer to get some different pictures of you. And I would just say it's going to make yourself, it's going to make it a lot easier on yourself. Maybe change your shirt for a couple different shots, mm -hmm. do a couple different settings outside, always photograph so nicely. Um, you have a few things to choose from for different materials as you move along the process. Um, yeah. Freshen them up every six months or so too. Exactly. We've got a comment here. Can you put other people's resources like organizations and resources offered by others that I don't offer yet? I, yeah, I think you can. You're linking it to another source. Mm -hmm. I can, I don't know a whole lot about SEO, but I can only imagine that that's going to help by linking out and lifting up other people's content. And to me, that's just, I'm assuming this might be, say, other authors or other people in this person's topic arena, but mm -hmm. I can only, that's just being a good literary citizen and uplifting others' work. And hopefully down the road, they would do the same for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think so, too. And um, say it's another blogger, another author, you know, you might even want to. Do you mind if I share this on, you know, on here, sentiment, dropping them an email, you know, and that's another way of networking, too. Um, I don't know that it's necessary, but um, but it would be a good idea. OK, this must be Jennifer, like other veteran and veteran family resources was what I meant. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jennifer, for your topics, I would definitely link to those because people are going to start to see you with these resources as like a true expert in right. your field by having an extensive list of stuff to go to. And it's the author website. It's not just about Jennifer, right? She's got these links. She's trying to help people giving them resources. So that's, mm -hmm. that's being a good steward of, you know, whatever you're writing about of those niche topics. Oh, she says it is. I don't know why I don't show up. Mine did that last time too. <laughs> StreamYard is weird. I do know that with StreamYard, you have to go and give StreamYard access to use your name. I guess that's not a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So for the website too, um, I want to mention that it doesn't have to be super complicated. You could do a very simple, you know, just drag and drop website. You can go with something a little bit more. Um, it has more bells and whistles like WordPress. Um, I use Weebly for years and it was, it's very user friendly. It's got the drag and drop and you can do pages on pages. Um, you know, whatever your comfort level is with the, the website, and you can always upgrade and do something different later, um, but just get something up. Now, yeah, on, that, yeah. on that website, what's the most important thing or one of the most important things that they need to have on that website? I, I'm, an, I'm looking up something that Claire is writing, and I'm going to go to Claire's website. Um, before I go or as I'm entering, what do you want to capture from me, Claire? I want to get your email address. Yeah. <laughs> now people have to opt in for that. So a lot of you want to have some kind of a pop up or even on each page, you can have a place where they can um, opt in to get email notifications from or to get emails from you. And that could be, you know, about when your book's coming out or you can do like a full blown newsletter or something that comes out once a month, biweekly. Um, I find once a month to be the sweet, sweet spot. And I think a lot of people feel the same way, um, especially with authors. And that is unless you have something special coming out, um, you know, Black Friday, things like that. Um, but that having 
building that email list is something that you can start doing before the book even gets published. Um, and yeah. a lot of times now, you know, people can just sign up for your email, but you want to give them a reason to. So that reader magnet is also a good idea. What are some examples of that? Well, you can offer a few different things. You could, um, I mean, as you're writing your book, you could do deleted chapters. Um, you can do a free one or two chapters. You can, in your area of topics, a lot of our nonfiction authors will offer like a top 10 list. Um, I love that idea. With like gardening. If gardening is one of your niche topics, what about like, say a top 10 list? How do I get started in gardening? Where do I start? What do I need to know? Or, and you, people always gravitate anyways towards lists, which is why you see so many listicles out on the web. Oh. But top 10 things I wish I knew before I started gardening. Yeah. And something like that, that's a great just, hey, I do want to read that. And then they pop their email address in and there you go. Right. And, and they're on your website for a reason anyway. So, if, and they're not going to be there long. As we know, people have short attention spans when they're online. Um, so this is one way of continuing the conversation through those, those newsletters that you're going to write every month or, you know, the emails that you're sending. And be prepared. People are going to unsubscribe. Don't take it personal. People's inboxes are kind of sacred spaces. And, you know, um, I know I unsubscribe a lot from things. I'm like, okay, well, I got what I needed from that service or, or whatever. Right. So in order to keep their attention, you want to put out a good newsletter. What are some things that you might put in the newsletter? Well, first of all, it doesn't have to be long. Mm -hmm. 500 words is fine, which is like a half a page of typed. And that can be updates on what you're working on. It can be book news. It can be if you're going to be like at a book signing or if you're doing a book tour. Um, those are some things that you could do as well as if you have information to add on your topics, like say if you're writing a blog and you could in repurpose that content for your newsletter, make it shorter or mm. even link the first Put, put in the first two paragraphs and then link to your website. I um, love it. Am I leaving any other ideas out for content? I'm sorry? Am I leaving any other ideas out for content? Um, for newsletter? Oh my gosh. With the newsletter, the sky is the limit. You could put anything in there. And like you said, you know, you can, you can fill it and make it really long, but we have to remember at people's attention span, I recommend using really nice images. So if you are at an event, you know, have, have a photographer, have somebody, a family member or whoever take pictures of you um, while you're at the event and use those throughout the year, those pictures in your newsletter, you know, it doesn't, doesn't have to be necessarily like, this is where I was here. Use that as um, one of those lifestyle images that we were talking about. Um, oh, goodness. Um, and you do, I just remembered, Lenore, you are posting once a month of monthly newsletter content ideas. Yes. So if you guys aren't, <laughs> if you guys aren't already taking advantage, take a look at her monthly postings. She's got a lot of great ideas in there for content for newsletter. Yeah. And, and to be honest, when you are writing your book, it is a great time to start doing all of these things and you can explore the newsletter. You can go in and get it set up. Don't have to send one out right away, but get it set up, get familiar with the process. Um, and, and then start building it. How, what am I going to put in my first one? You know, what am I going to say to people? I, and then you're also starting to think through the lens of an actual author and not just, you know, somebody, you know, writing a book, you're an author, it's going to be published. And so that shifts your, your, um, your mentality to it being a business because it is, mm -hmm. um, it's a soul business. And uh, it gets fun. This is the, 
sharing the message, sharing the book and all this stuff, this to me is almost as fun as writing the book. And this part is ongoing. So it doesn't need to be scary. It can be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, that brings us into social media. So <laughs> I want to say yeah, <laughs> Facebook is... I mean, we all know Facebook and we were here now on Facebook. Um, right. Facebook is really good about groups and having an author page where people can, again, come see information about you. Um, Instagram is, I last time I checked, Instagram is the most popular, but TikTok yes. is very close to overtaking Instagram. So TikTok and Instagram are the two bigger platforms. But again, don't go there if your target audience is not there. Um, I do want to say about social media, the importance of having your author newsletter is because you those email addresses you own, the followers that you garner on social media, you don't own those. And the other day when Facebook and Instagram went dark, <laughs> nobody could contact or engage with their people. And the ones that had email newsletters were able to send those out to your inbox. And I got a few of those. <laughs> um, so your followers, that's not something that you own. And social media is just an avenue for you to direct followers to your website. Right, right. And, and follow your story, right? Because like Instagram, you're, you're basically <laughs> the day Facebook went dark. <laughs> yeah. um, you're, te you're telling a story with Instagram, with your pictures. I mean, TikTok, you're, people were, you're telling a story. And I, I'm not completely familiar with TikTok. My daughter likes it. Um, but again, that's kind of the age group, right? So if, if you're wanting to hit those people, those younger people, TikTok might be a, a good one for you. Um, I also want to mention before we get away from it is with the newsletter, when we say that you own those people, opt in to receive those newsletters to you and they're able to unsubscribe and opt out. So with most newsletter services, you are able to download or export that your list. And so, you know, say the, the whatever service that you're using for your newsletter, if you don't export that, you know, if they go down um, and I don't, I think people don't necessarily talk about this a lot, but you, you want to um, export that list. So you actually do have it in case something happens to them. Like a backup. A backup, exactly. So if something if it goes down and you know it's never coming back up, you can start again in another service. You may have to you know cut and paste or retype them all, but you still have them. Right. Right. So that's just a, a little note. Um, so let's see, where were we? Oh, social media. I love Instagram. I love that you can use images to tell a story. And, um, and the actual story function, I think is yeah. fun. And that's for people that are, that enjoy photography too. And that are visual. I have always loved photography. So that's fun for me. Now yeah, I know that some of our authors, I remember talking with one a few months ago and they don't like taking pictures. That's not their jam. So, but talking might be something that's better. They're more comfortable do, doing that. And that kind of brings us into the working platform. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Claire? Yeah. So the working platform is, this is a fluid platform based on what you choose it to be. It could be speaking engagements or running a workshop or a course, um, podcasts, whether you're a podcast host or guesting, guesting is that a word? <laughs> Being yeah. a guest on a podcast. Um, what else am I leaving out? 
Oh, let's see. Blogging. Blogging is not dead. Contributing, not dead. Mm-hmm. contributing articles to other publications. Absolutely. One. But this platform is where you spread your message about your niche topics. Right. And your expert in the field and your message. So you're not, this is the soft sell that we talk a lot about. And let me explain what that is. The soft sell and the hard sell. The hard sell is when you have a book coming out next month and you are, you're pushing it and it's out there in people's space and here it comes and here it is, your launch and all that stuff. And and that starts to taper off once post-launch. But the soft sell is all that time before your book comes out and then after launch season, Mm -hmm. um, building connections and um, you're sharing your message in a way that's helpful, um, talking on podcasts. And then you're, you know, you're plugging your book uh, here and there. It's at the end of your YouTube, the image of it. Um, So for example, if I was a podcast host, I could introduce you and say this is Lenora Henson and she's writes at lenorahenson.com and she is the author of xyz books go check her out here exactly and And at the end after you've talked about all that niche topic stuff at the end that podcast host is going to plug you again and if you're the one if you have for your working platform if you've chosen to be a podcast host then at the beginning, you're going to want to say it about yourself. It's going to be part of your introduction. I'm the author of, and then at the end, you could even add something there. Same way with the YouTube channel. You're going to want to put a picture of the book up or um, say who you are, where the book is available at, and then you move on with the message. So that's how you kind of mingle that soft sell in with the sharing of the message. So Right, right. Um, oh, social media, I just want to touch on a couple more things besides posting where your target audience is. The key is to be authentic and genuine in the way that you engage with people, engage yeah. with the hashtags that you use, comment in like a real way on other people's content. Um, so they shouldn't just leave a heart. There's, there's not a lot to interact with there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. exactly. So, yeah, take your time and, and, and build connections. It, yeah, social media is it's truly a conversation to participate in. So that's, that's why you're there in the first place is to get the mm-hmm. conversation going and engage with the people that are interested in the same things, your niche topics, right. your book arena if you will. Right. So you're not necessarily like, man, I could, I could sell a book to this person. That's not necessarily what your train of thought is. It's, Oh, we're interested in the same thing. Exactly. Um, is, you know, um, and you, you start that conversation. I like it. I like yeah. it. Um, I, like I, it. I mean, and um, authors could be influencers. There's nothing right. wrong with an influencer, but be it authentically. Right. Right. Um, let's move on to talking about productivity. How do you balance writing and marketing? I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't know any authors who don't have a life outside of writing their book. Like we have families or other people that we're responsible for bills to pay, social engagements, um, uh, laundry to do. <laughs> we have other stuff to do. How yeah. do you you you're already figuring out when to write, and now you got to figure out when to do marketing. Like, how do you do all that? Well, what's coming to mind as you're saying this for me is you number one, you have to get excited about it. You have to, and then what do I get to work on today? To share my message to um, what do I get to do? Um, Maybe it's sharing an Instagram post. Maybe it's writing a blog post. Maybe it's putting together my newsletter. Um, 
but first of all, you have to get excited about it and don't look at it as drudgery um, or yeah, drudgery I, or however you want to say it. Right. <laughs> From a different perspective, you can use a spreadsheet if you want to. You can use however you organize your life. If you want to write down, you know, on paper what your to-do list is, but try to do, I would say, try to do at least one thing a day that moves the needle forward. Is it opening up a newsletter account? Is it writing a newsletter? Is it connecting with a couple people, um, pitching them for a podcast? Is it, you know, finding some new hashtags? It doesn't have to be, I got to do it all today. Right. It doesn't have to be like that. You have to, um, you have to give yourself some grace and um, just ease yourself into it. And as you do that, you're not going to burn out if, if you just do a chunks at a time. And what, how do you feel about that, Claire, having been on that role? I completely agree. It's a little bit at a time is so much can be accomplished just a little bit every day. Um, I was talking with Jennifer yesterday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here's her comment. And yeah. I love that idea of just spending 10 minutes a day interacting with your hashtags. I know another Julie does the same thing with her Instagram It's she's like, yeah, I do it at night and spend a few minutes just interacting with my hashtags and it works. It does. And I think also reframing it too. It's not um, going into your day like, what am I going to do to market? You know, my book, I got to get sales up or I, I got to have this many newsletter subscribers. Um, it's going in with this mindset of how can I share today? Yeah. I, I think how the whole topic share? of authors and productivity is there's so much out there and I'm always interested as well to hear how people manage their time because mm -hmm. I mean, not to mention their author business, other people, they also have often have full-time jobs and families mm -hmm. on top of that. So it is a lot to manage and you do have to be intentional with how you spend your time. And I think the biggest key to that is figuring out ahead of time how you're going to spend your time. I, I like that. Yeah. So I, I used to get up at, I used to get up at five in the morning. Well, I still do, but um, that would be when I focused on either writing or I would do something for marketing. And a lot of times it would be both. Um, you know, I'm going to write first and knock a chapter out or, or whatever, or until I'm, you know, burn out on it. And then I'm going to move into something that's going to move the needle forward um, with the marketing. Right. I, I had, I would say I had like, Sometimes I could get up early and do that early writing time. I was never great about keeping it going. But one thing that really worked for me was using the Pomodoro technique. And you can get a lot written and a lot done in 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. Um, I Sometimes my goal would be, all right, I'm going to spend 20 minutes on this in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon. And those are that's 40 minutes of really good swap, good quality work accomplished. And it doesn't seem as intimidating. Right. And if you're, like yeah. Right. So if you're having a hard time finding a good two hour chunk of time to knock some stuff out, break it down into smaller steps and try 20 minutes and see what you can get done. I like that. And some people are night owls too. Yeah. Um, or, you know, sporadically do it throughout the day. Like you said. Or right. on your lunch hour, you know, there, there's, there's always time. Right, right. I feel like, I feel like you can, or even just thinking about it, if you can be thinking about it on your drive home, you know, on your commute or whatever. And then when you get to it, you've already got a plan. Mentally. Right. I mean, for instance, I've done a lot of stuff just sitting in the car pickup line. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so, I mean, I've, well. I've written, I've drafted blog posts. You could be engaging on social media, like for your author business and not just scrolling your phone, um, but figuring out how you're going to use your time.
Um, let's see. What about post launch marketing? Mm. Because once your book is up for sale, you still have stuff to do, right? Oh, it's just beginning. It's truly just beginning. Yeah. And, and that's when the, the fun really starts. Um, first off, post-launch, you want to make sure you've got a newsletter going. All right. And, and a lot of times it takes some a while to get some traction with that. So be patient. Um, get out there if you can. If you're able to get out there and... <laughs> <laughs> uh warby parker go get yourself a pair they're awesome <laughs> um what were we talking about i lost my train of thought now um right oh, after book is out there yeah get out there Pro give yourself a book tour i this is a big deal this is how you're making connections. This is how you're doing that soft sell and the hard sell together because you're making connections with people and you've also got books for sale, right? So right. This, this is huge. If you can get out there, even speaking engagements, if you can give lectures, if you can sign books at libraries, think outside the box on this one because this one, it's like the newsletter. The sky is really the limit. Go do a, a book signing at a winery or a library, or even you can do a virtual one if you are not able to, um, you know, given our current circumstances, get out, do a virtual one, connect with people. You know, sometimes libraries have virtual book um, launch parties and you can connect them straight to your link to Amazon or wherever the, you, they can be buying your book. Um, but that's where I would start. Yeah. And you know what I would say, I mean, <laughs> is this one of the good things that came out of the pandemic, but there's so much that's virtual now yeah. that if you're not able to get out just yet, or you're not, maybe you're still building your confidence to get out and do the book tour, try some virtual stuff, mm -hmm. do a virtual talk on your, your niche topics. Absolutely. And yes, you do deserve a book tour. Once you, um, I completely agree that you've gone through all that work and all that, you know, that soul, that deep soul diving, as I like to call it, you deserve a book tour and people, yeah. you put that message, you worked so hard to put that message into that book form. Um, now you got to share it. You have, you have a responsibility to the message to go share it. Right. So I am super passionate about book tours. It's almost as fun to me as the book launches. Mm -hmm. I may be a total nerd, but I kind of like this stuff. So <laughs> um, what do you think besides the book tour? I was just trying to remember some of the other things that we do. Um, speaking engagements. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, you can run a workshop or online course. You can do, um, you could even start doing newsletter swaps. Yes. Yep. That's a good idea too. I did my first virtual book signing last week. Oh, that's amazing. Who is this? Is this still Jennifer? Jennifer? I wonder, so how, cool. I wonder how, I wonder how, amazing. I love it. Yes. That's cool. Yeah, that is so cool. Um, let's see, what are some other things that they can do? Oh, also swag. You can't forget the swag and the merchandise. You can sell merchandise straight from your website. And a lot of times that's done through third parties. So you don't necessarily have to have inventory. Um, you know, you can design it. You can design t-shirts, tote bags, um, or, you know, book bags or whatever. Stickers, phone cases, so many Happy different months. things. What's up? Coffee mugs. I don't know why I did this motion, but <laughs> you know, holding a coffee mug. Mm -hmm. And not only does that share your message, but it gives you a little bit of extra revenue too for your book biz. So yeah, that's something to think about as well. Now, swag and merch, those those are two different things in my book. The merchandise is something that you're gonna sell, and then the swag is something that you're going to have um, with your book or your name or whatever on it. And that's something you're going to be giving away, whether it be through a giveaway, which is another good thing or at, um, 
Oh, bookmarks too. That's another one. Yeah. At uh, festivals or whatever, that's you're going to be giving that away. Especially, bookmarks are great because even if they don't buy a book, they're going to be reading a book and they may use your bookmark and they see, oh, that might be a good one to read next. Barcode on your card that oh, yes, yeah, the QR code. I love that. And that's well, actually, that's something that who, somebody came out with that recently, and I'm like, of course, yeah. uh, Kendall, Kendall. Entrepreneur Dave yeah. Kesson came out with a QR code generator. There we go. It's super easy to make. You can make direct it to anything. But yeah, it's so convenient to slap that on any any of your swag or merchandise. I love that. So if you want them to go leave a review, it could take them straight to the review spot, which is a whole other um, thing. <laughs> Reviews, but we're going to have another chat about that later this month. So if you guys are wondering all about reviews you might want to tune in in a couple of weeks because claire and i'll be back for that yes a business card is a great place for that qr absolutely yeah, i do want to mention so on the note about a business card you could do something like that even now before your book is out so anytime you're talking to say a friend and they're like oh well let me know when your book is out and i'll read it and you can say well go to my website, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll get all the updates. And with the business card, you could have just your name, website, and a QR code going to your website with that information that you could also hand them to answer that question. That's brilliant. I yeah. love it. Yeah. So yeah, good idea to put that on a business card. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. What other... I think this. Go ahead. I want to say promote the post launch promoting and marketing. It's all about continuing the conversation with your mm -hmm. target audience. You're looking to get your book and spread that message to people that haven't found it yet. That's your goal. And so mm -hmm. when you hear the term marketing or that's what you're doing, you're spreading your book's message. And you want to get it in front of the right people. Absolutely. And I, I love um, Burning Soft Press's view on this because the soft sell, it is about connecting. It is about sharing the story. And you don't know when you're out there as an author, maybe you're encouraging somebody to share their story by you being out there. Um, so it, it definitely has a ripple effect. Absolutely. Well, and yeah. just by sharing our stories with other people out there, that's offering mm -hmm. that inspiration. And right. that's why it's important to get your book message out there. Absolutely. So the soft sell is where it's at. Absolutely. 100%. It is. Yep. And the hard sell, again, there's, there's a time and place for that. The holidays are coming. That's that's a good place to slip some of that hard sell in. And it's not that you can't ever do it. And again, if you're not doing, if you're doing 100% soft sell, that's not good either. You want to have that book image available whenever you're doing anything, right? People need to know um, that the book's available and it can be subtle. Right. It could be right. behind you. It could be behind you in a while you're doing a video or something. But um, we can't forget to include that. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Any questions? It's such yeah. a broad topic. <laughs> it is. It is. It's um, it's definitely a lot at first if yeah. you're just breaking into thinking about marketing as an author but mm -hmm. step by step one thing at a time like we said start with your target audience and your niche topics and that's going to inform and give you direction on where to go so yes. yeah it, oh sorry go ahead yeah, absolutely <laughs> yeah so if anybody has any other questions after we're done here go ahead and post them in the comments and we'll be sure to check back and answer any questions. Just 
if you're writing your book, um, you say you're writing your book right now, I challenge you to do one thing this week to move the forward, move the needle forward on sh um, the sharing of this connection, sharing of your story, or even, you know, creating a plan for it. It doesn't have to be big, just make a step. And once you get that, you just, like she said, just moving on to the next step and it builds and authors, you know, you're an author for life. This is going to continue. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad everybody's joining us today. Um, because it, it is a, it's a, a very fun topic and I can, this is, this is one of my niche topics, I think, because <laughs> I can go on and on and on about this. I think so. We didn't think we would fill an hour and here we are at 50 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions? And really, you know, if you're just starting out and I understand a lot of people don't know anything about it and ask away, ask away. It's not something to be intimidated by, because like I said, it's, it's something that stretches out for years. So all of this doesn't have to be built in a day, right. but you have to start building. Yeah. Well, great idea. Great uh, challenge. Do one thing this week to move the needle. So, well, thanks, Lenora. This was I fun. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I wish we could do this every week. This was a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, any other questions? I don't think so, but we can always come back if you want to leave anything um, and you can get as specific as you want to and we will come back and answer all your questions. Don't forget, we're gonna be back in a couple weeks to talk specifically about book reviews, um, the different kinds and um, how to get them. So, and kind of the ins and in and out of them, because there's a lot of questions uh, around that. You're welcome. Thanks, Talk Jennifer. Thanks for coming. All right. Well, thanks, Claire. Always good to talk to you. Yeah, this was fun. All right. Have a good afternoon. Bye.